It's the first time that Trinidad is seeing this kind of migrant phenomenon. All I see is a mass of desperate humanity needing help. We don't have hope in Trinidad. We don't have proper health. You just bring them from one disaster into another disaster. Es como que una tabla de salvación en el medio del océano. Mira, tenemos que irnos. Vamos a agarrarnos esta tabla. Y vamos a ver hasta dónde esta tabla nos lleva. Ahorita vamos a agarrar la tabla. Mi familia y yo. Forced human displacement is higher than it's ever been in modern history. And so we're going to the places, meeting the faces, to find out how it's changed in our world. These are the people trying to find a home. This is the displaced. Another violent protest in Caracas. Venezuela's neighboring South American countries are struggling to keep up with the massive flow of these refugees. The level of political violence is causing increasing concern in the region. Trinidad, a small Caribbean island with just over a million people. Recently though, there's been a rapid increase of thousands of Venezuelans fleeing here as a result of political and economic crisis back home. Trinidad is only seven miles off the coast of Venezuela, making it one of the easiest places for people to reach. But despite the small distance, Venezuelans face big challenges when they arrive. This is a video of the apertura of the año judicial in Venezuela. In Caracas, the Tribunal Supreme Justicia. Tell me what life was like in Venezuela for you and your family. Que para tu poder comer tienes que romper tu cama, utilizar la madera para cocinar, porque no hay gas. Mi hijo se enfermó y en la clínica no había medicinas. Y lo que el médico resolvió fue que yo fuera a la veterinaria a comprar un remedio para perros y con ese remedio sanar a mi hijo. Venezuela used to be South America's richest country, having the largest oil reserves in the world. Where slow-moving ox carts once plodded, eight-lane highways speed traffic through Venezuela's new metropolis, Avenida Bolivar. But in the last 20 years, a combination of huge government spending, crashing oil prices and allegations of corruption sent the economy spiraling. 94% of Venezuelans currently live in poverty. And President Nicolas Maduro has garnered many critics across the globe, condemning what they say is authoritarian leadership. ¿Cómo le dice? You need help. Los jueces, el Poder Judicial, el Consejo Nacional Electoral, gobernadores, que todo, todo juega a favor de ellos. Si hay uno que no juega a favor de ellos, te puedes, te pueden matar, te pueden asesinar. Yo prefiero. Salir, trabajar de lo que sea, en buena, de buena manera, para mantener a mi familia. Manuel fled to Trinidad last summer. Since then, he's worked as a fisherman, a carpenter, and now he's a security guard in a shopping center. It sounds like, to some level, you have been stripped of your identity. How do you feel about the new identity that you have here in Trinidad? Primero, un temor indescriptible. Porque tú como cabeza de familia, como hombre, lanzarte al vacío. Pero no eres el primero, ni serás, ni eres el único. Entonces yo aposté a eso. Pero Trinidad ha sido muy duro con los emigrantes. Acudes a la ONU y pides el refugio, el asilo, en primer lugar. Y el gobierno no respeta. Four million Venezuelans have fled their country, which is about 10% of its population. Of that, it's estimated over 40,000 came to Trinidad, meaning proportionally this small island's taken in more people than almost any other country. If you look into the horizon, you can see a black line. Well, that is Venezuela. Now you can see why so many thousands of Venezuelans are coming here to Trinidad. The islands are so close. This has sparked resentment. Some locals in Trinidad and Tobago argue the people coming over are just economic migrants, not refugees. Venezuelan problem is for Venezuelans. This little island cannot be the solution to millions or hundreds of thousands of migrants leaving Venezuela. Trinidad and Tobago don't have any legislation protecting refugees or asylum seekers. So, until recently, those fleeing Venezuela have been denied any rights to live and work. 
In an attempt to manage the crisis, the government created a registration period. For two weeks in June, any Venezuelan, legal or illegal, could register to live and work. It's done little to appease local critics, however, who remain anxious about the lack of jobs. These Venezuelans are being sold false dreams and promises. We are not against the migrants. How could this country, how could this government give amnesty and leave the borders open? We're grieving for our land and we're being robbed by these people. Why would I have sympathy for somebody that is coming to rob me? With one of the highest murder rates in the world, crime and gangs are also huge issues in Trinidad. There are concerns that illegal migration is fueling criminals and traffickers. And with an election coming up in 2020, the government's message is clear. The fact of the matter is, if you enter this country illegally, if you have overstayed your time, you have broken the law. There's no degree of flexibility in that. Um, the state has given them an amnesty, a window of opportunity for them. Let no one be fooled into believing that they have authority to do whatever they want, whenever they please. If at any time they do anything, even if registered, that may be, be deemed that they are a threat to national security, or, uh, we would have them deported. But for international human rights groups, this aggressive law enforcement is impacting those seeking refuge. Prior to the registration period, there were accusations the government was deporting people with approved asylum status from the United Nations Refugee Agency, violating Trinidad's commitments to international humanitarian laws. The government refused multiple BBC requests for an interview to address this. As a result, Venezuelans were anxious to get registered on time. Originally, the government said there would be five registration points. In the end, there were only three. This is absolute chaos. It is, it is. How many people are waiting now here where we are? We not hundreds, if not thousands. There are so many people. Yes, there are. These are people who have been camping out for the last three or four nights, basically living under these tents. We have volunteers on the ground all through the day, bringing baby food and water. In the beginning, we just had cardboard boxes that we ripped apart to give the people to lie on. I'm assuming that many here will not get registered. I mean, it's quite obvious if today's yes. the last day. Yes. What will happen to those people? That is their decision. Um, the, the, the authorities have not let us know what's going to happen, but they are desperate to get into this process. You have children? You left them in Venezuela? No se consigue dinero como para traerla para acá. Yo trabajo acá y le envío el poco dinero que gano, se lo envío allá a Venezuela. How are you feeling about the current situation? Totalmente nervioso. Si no lo logro sería de verdad demasiado triste. Porque vine con la intención de trabajar, de echar para adelante, para ayudar a mi familia. Moments before the deadline, police blocked off the line. The government declared that all unregistered Venezuelans would be regarded as illegal. There's this last minute rush, and the desperation from these Venezuelans is so powerful. You can see it here, just people rushing to be able to get through and be registered. Panic, anxiety, look. Venezuelans were left waiting, confused about the process and worried about how the police would react. The government announced in the following weeks that 16,500 Venezuelans had been registered in the two-week window, a figure significantly lower than the estimated number of Venezuelans in the country. As it stands, the government refuses to reopen registration. Those who weren't registered are in limbo, but so are those families who made it through. Permits are temporary, and the most they've been promised is a year's work allowance. What's more, Venezuelan kids are still not allowed to go to school. In response, some Trinidadians have set up volunteer groups to help families and children. Whilst they are not officially called schools, they teach maths and English. What is your favorite school? Let's look at that. Burger? 
Same girl, same. And provide free medical checks. They even run Zumba classes. It looked like a normal kid, but if you be more involved with the kids, you know something's different. They are crying sometimes when they try to talk. Remember that most of them came by boat in an illegal way, hiding in a bag. So they'll be dealing with trauma? Yes, of course. Most of them are terrified. Some kids pass 10 hours alone in a small room because the mother or the father have to work outside. Can you imagine if you pass six months, a year, two years in a square room, how you recover and you see, I feel okay in this country. Volunteers are here making it up as they go along, but really what you've got is all sorts of ages clumped together, no proper curriculum, and people just doing their very best. More people are expected to arrive as the Venezuelan crisis continues. Local councillors like Shankar say the government is unprepared and international help is urgently needed. We need to get the expertise who are on, on the humanitarian aid come in the country and assist this country with the present situation. But our government today are so hell-bent in terms of what they're doing based on trial and error and, and feel that Trinidad has the resources to manage this. We don't have it. Shankar is a councillor for Cedros, a coastal region in the south and one of the closest points to Venezuela. He has strong concerns over increased piracy and kidnappings in the area. These pirates are often former Venezuelan fishermen who in the current climate have become aggressively desperate to make money and take resources. Well, sometimes fishermen go out there to work at sea and they kidnap them. They call ransom for the boat and the engine. There are people right here in this village. People kidnapped. that you know? Yeah. We don't go far anymore because we cannot afford to take the chance. Because If you go too far and not, Venezuelan not, hold you, you're in problem. You lose your boat, you lose your engine. You might make some time in prison. Or you might lose your life also. How do you feel about the future here? Encasillado. Las cosas cuando tienen una fecha de duración, tienes un año para esto. Pero el problema está en que si pasa el año y no se acomoda la situación de nosotros, nos dicen no porque Trinidad tiene la potestad de decirte no queremos que estés más en el país necesitamos necesitamos que salgas del país. If you did have to go back to Venezuela, if you were deported back after a year, do you know what would happen to you? Venezuela. Jail. Jail. Prison. Yeah, but you leave it. Venezuela. You are traitor. Oh wow. Okay. Yes. And you know when you are a asylum seeker. Do you know how right? But I I didn't know about Venezuela. Yeah. I, I have one year for think. To to come up with a plan. Yeah. I have two hands and brain for think and create. 